Well, let's start oh, yeah, some chess. And I have a Perrier also. So, Okay, so it's not a secret that Magnus lost again. And he sort of lost two games in a row, but there was a rest day in the middle. But still, it's, he, he lost two rounds in a row. And the last time he lost two rounds in a row was 2015 in Norway chess. He lost rounds one and two. And he was losing in round four, which he didn't lose. And he lost in the last round to Hammer. What? What does, what does he mean? Who's in a Hammer? Jesus Christ. Anyway, so N Nigel Davies, I want to say. He's a grandmaster from the UK. He said, you know, Magnus is finished, you know, because he doesn't, he's, he doesn't care anymore. He literally doesn't care or something. So if you ever lose one or two games of chess, you're finished, according to Nick. That's, that truth hurts. Man, internet's tough. He's been the highest rated player in the world for like 11 years, but he lost two games, so he's done. Man, harsh. Okay. Um, Abdu Satarov is 19. He's beaten Magnus before in either slow, rapid, or blitz, or all three. Um, and now Magnus is fighting for the bottom places. But I'm guessing when the tournament's over, he won't be fighting for the bottom places. Although I could be wrong. What do I know? Okay, so Magnus was white. He played C4, which is... The English? What? Oh, explosive? Yeah. The English is also correct. <laughs> they played a symmetrical English. Okay, and they got their knights out. Okay, good, right? Yeah. Okay. So Magnus is trying to play something his opponent doesn't know very well. Over the last 10 years, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's more than 10 years, Black has been playing E5 here. And when I was playing chess 30, 40 years ago, uh, Black would play E6, D4, D5, symmetrical, or... Black would play g6, take on d4, and play d5, and try to get some kind of Grunfeld reverse Taresh kind of position. But now they're playing e5 because you can analyze this forever. You know, because there's like d4 and e4, and you know, I, I can't analyze that. But Magnus played bishop e2, and that's not the most common. And Abdus Sitarov played d5, which I assume is his prep. And now White can actually play d4, confusing the audience, but Magnus played the usual cd knight d5, castles, bishop e7. Black has sort of the Marazzi bind pawn structure, which isn't very binding here, um, because you can play d4 anyway, which is sort of the point of the structure. Okay, Magnus played bishop b5, which loses a tempo, but is very aggressive. When I say it loses a tempo, White already played bishop e2, now he's moving his bishop again. You could argue black lost to tempo by moving his knight twice. Now the e5 pawn is, is under pressure. Okay, recommended by Freddie Mercury and... David Bowie. Very good. <laughs> See, paying attention. Okay, and, and, and so he played knight takes c3. Obviously, we'd like to play a move like queen c7, which defends e5 and defends c6, but that would hang the knight on d5 mm -hmm. so he could play queen d6 which also defends both but you sort of run into knight e4 and yeah. okay in fact i said queen d6 like of my own volition without cheating and the engine says queen d6 is this much better than knight c3 so queen d6 is a viable alternative okay he played knight takes c3 bc and then queen c7 and the engine slightly prefers Magnus's position because Magnus has castled and his opponent hasn't castled. And in such situations, you want to open the center. So Magnus played d4, very thematic. Or as I like to say, thematic. Now, white is threatening the e5 pawn again because the knight is pinned. If we unpin the knight by castling, we just take the knight, then we take the free pawn on e5. So black has to do something because things are happening. Knight takes e5 as a threat, d5 as a threat, etc. So he takes the pawn, he takes back, takes the pawn. And you can take either way on d4, but knight takes d4 is the engine preference, putting pressure on c6. Now black has two viable moves. He can castle, or he can play bishop to d7. 
He played bishop d7. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now Magnus played very strange. He played a strange move, then he played a very strange move. Um, and his very strange move is, is just bad. And after his very strange move, I would say he's losing if two engines are playing. So in this position, white is slightly better, and in three moves, Magnus is lost. So it's not the Magnus we're used to. He's slightly better with white. He got his opponent out of prep. Then he outplays him and wins. That's, that's the Magnus we're used to. If you want to see that Magnus, look at the round two game he won with black. That's the Magnus we're used to seeing. That's the only game he's won this event, which is one more than I've won. Okay. And in this position, Magnus played a move I would never think of. Never. If you played this move, I would yell at you for being too passive. Yeah. yeah I would never consider this move. I would consider the moves the engine is saying. Queen c2, pressuring c6 and pinning the knight. Bishop b2, developing the bishop. I'd probably play bishop b2. Queen c2, I don't know if my queen belongs there. My queen has other squares, right? So I'm, I'm not sure my queen belongs here. Bishop b2, I'm pretty sure my bishop belongs there. Because I can't go here and this is stupid. Mm -hmm. so the engine likes this it says this is a close second and white's slightly better um to be perfectly honest i don't understand magnus's move usually i can say this is why magnus did it but he was thinking incorrectly i i have no idea why he made this move i got i got nothing he played knight f3 and i i don't know why i guess Black could play knight takes d4, so he stopped it. But that wasn't something to be stopped, I guess. Well, queen c2 stops it. Okay, now black can play very safe, but black made a mistake. And as Wes Berger told me a long time ago, over 10 years ago, he said, the reason I win games, me, is because I make good mistakes. And those are moves the engine doesn't like, but your opponent can't face them. Your opponent can't handle the truth. Your opponent plays badly against your mistake and then you win. That's exactly what happened here. The best move is to just castle and black has no issues. And if I was black, I, I guess I would castle, okay? Although I might play the move Abdus Satorov played, um, but I doubt it. He played Bishop F6 attacking the Rook and that lets Magnus play rook b1, and the rook is better on b1 than a1. So, I mean, rook b1's fine, and white's slightly better. Um, and I guess Abdu Satorov's thinking was, if I castle, white can play bishop b2, and I can't thwart the bishop with bishop f6, because I ruined my pawn structure. So I might as well stop bishop b2. Okay, now, in this position, you'll notice that Black's king is still in the center, and Magnus wanted to punish his opponent um, for his indolence, and that's because his first language is Norwegian. He meant insolence. <laughs> Weren't you an English major? Do you know what indolence means? Yeah, what? La laziness. Yeah, what about the, the chat? Ace Deuce quoted The Simpsons. Excellent. His indolence was inefficacious. That's right. Okay. So, one of the problems the best players in the world have is they try to play the most incisive move when they should be playing a boring move. However, when they should be playing an incisive move, then they play it. And weaker players never play an incisive move. They just play whatever's the simplest. So weaker players never win, and good players always win. However, there's the small percentage of the time when you should play the boring move, not the, the, the crazy move. And Magnus decided bishop f6 was a mistake, and I'm going to punish it. And he didn't play rook b1, confusing Karen. Karen's like, he didn't play rook b1. What, what do you mean? What did he do? And he prevented black from castling. Kingside anyway. Mm -hmm. Played bishop a3. Mm. He sacrificed the exchange. Probably he thought of me. 
always sack the exchange, and he stopped him from castling. And he thought, after bishop takes, queen takes, I'm threatening queen takes g7, he can't castle, he can never castle, etc. Okay, and the engine says, boo, boo. Okay, also, in my opinion, you, you may disagree, Magnus was probably under some self-pressure because he lost the last game, and now he has white, so you can't lose and then draw with white. Magnus didn't come here to get plus one. Magnus came here to win the tournament. So if Magnus thinks one line is interesting and another line is equal, he'll probably in this particular game play the interesting line because equal and drawing with white, you know, you can't, you can't lose with black and draw with white. That's not what Magnus is about. Magnus is about winning with white and occasionally winning with black. Okay, and the engine doesn't like this move. And unfortunately, I think if he was playing an older player like me, this would work out really well. I would be afraid. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be scared that my king's in the center. And he's playing Abdus Satorov, who loves the complications and the interesting play. So he won the exchange. And why can't they, why can't? Black castle queenside at some point. That's exactly what he did. Okay, because you right. said they'll, they'll never castle. Right, I meant kingside. Okay. Yeah. And so, and now he castle queenside. And that looks dangerous because the C file's yeah. open and the B file's half open. Thanks, D file. Sorry I didn't mention the D file when you subscribed. That's my bad. It does look scary. I know that Dave Mason song very well. Terrible. Okay, and the engine says white's not losing, but the engine prefers black. And maybe Magnus didn't think he was better. He just thought this was more interesting, and I'll play my opponent, except for one thing. Okay, um, the problem with taking on G7, which is like one of the, my top engine lines if I, was, if I was playing, is after rook G8, that's very dangerous. Because the knight can come to e5, and bishop can come to h3, and uh, engine doesn't like it. Engine says bad for white. So Magnus played rook c1, lining up his rook with the, with the king and the queen. Always play king b8. And now he could take on g7 safely because there's no knight coming anywhere because it's pinned. So now there's no discovered attacks on the bishop. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he played rook h g8, which is fine. My engine's going crazy. Let me delete this line. I can't delete the line? Then I won't. Okay, and in this position, Magnus blundered. Magnus says after queen takes h7, uh, you know, white has two pawns for the exchange. It's a double-edged position. White has two bishops. All three results are possible and will happen. Probably Magnus was worried about bishop g4 attacking his knight. If the knight moves, we play rook h8, and the queen and the rook are attacking h2, and the knight's gone. So Magnus was probably like, I probably shouldn't play here, because I shouldn't open the h-file, and then I'm probably losing. And the engine, which is an engine, like actually lets black play queen h2 and king f1, which is not something a human would do. Humans don't let, let you take on h2 and play king f1. It's crazy. Okay, so Magnus played a uh, bad move, queen b2, too passive. And, you know, if I was playing Magnus with white or black, I would get crushed because this position is too complicated and he would outcalculate me, he would understand it better, and so forth. But he's playing somebody good who's young, so that's that's just his game. And to be honest... You guys always say that I hate Magnus and so forth, okay? Because I don't bow down to he's the greatest player who ever lived because I don't think he is. And Magnus's weakness, if he has one, is these kinds of positions. When it's boring and he's better, he's the best. When it's interesting and he's worse, he's not the best. And that's exactly what this is. The engine prefers black and... It's a very complicated double-edged position. That's not that's not Magnus. That's not he doesn't play like that. 
Okay, so bishop g4 is the best move. Now, if I was black and I played bishop g4, like I would analyze bishop g4 because it looks good, I would be worried about knight d4 because my knight's pinned and attacked like seven times. I just undefended it. And the funny thing about this is the correct move for black here and the only good move is knight takes d4, giving his queen away. And then after rook takes queen, which is a blunder, black has forced checkmate. If black doesn't play the forced checkmate, black's losing. So that means when Abdu Sitarov played bishop g4, he saw this. And Magnus, when he did not play knight d4, he saw this. Okay? And even here, this would be a very difficult puzzle. This is a, if, if this was given to us as a puzzle, mm -hmm. this would be rated like 2,800. So see if you can find the winning move for black. Um... Let's see, maybe knight f3. That's correct. And then yeah, right. pawn takes. If you play here, watch this checkmate. Okay, I want donations because of the checkmate. Okay, so this is checkmate, if you can believe that. And the engine says this is also checkmate. Now, this is a better checkmate because you set up for the next game. Now, black, he can set up the black pieces and got his knight on. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's good. Okay, and so if you take the knight, well, if you play king here, then this is going to be made after bishop f1. Always play bishop f1. So you take the knight. Oh, give me the knight. And then you can be more than one way. You can play rook here check or bishop here check or bishop here check. They're all mate. They're all checkmate. And then if king f1, rook here mate. So the engine plays this and then mate. And not only is it mate, but black has a free rook. Oh boy. Okay. So when bishop g4 was played, both players realized knight d4 is no good. Now, nobody's going to talk to Magnus about the game because he'll have furious, you know, rage and anger and stuff. So it's possible, I don't know, when Magnus played queen b2, he thought, well, my opponent can't play the obvious bishop g4 because this is good. And that is good if black doesn't play that queen sacrifice mate. And it's possible after bishop g4, he went, oh, I can't play knight d4. I don't know if that happened. Possible. Okay, so Magnus played knight e1. Always play knight e1. Rook to d1. Takes, takes. And basically, black is up the exchange for a pawn. And black, later in the game, can produce a pass pawn on the queen side with his queen side majority. And even though white is very fortuitous on the king side, right? He's got four to two. He, he can't get a passed pawn. Terrible. Also, I have a rook. So now this is just winning uh, for black, but it's very complicated. Wait a it's minute. hard to win. So yes. what do you mean by he, you just, what knowledge do you have that you can just glance at that and say he can't get a passed pawn? Well, right now he has no passed pawns and getting a passed pawn is very difficult. You can get a passed pawn, but it won't be this one. It won't be this one. It won't be this one. It'll be this one. And that'll take you like 400 moves. Okay, I thought you meant. You could get a passed pawn, but normally, when it's like four to two, you already have a passed pawn. So this this pawn I structure, see. which we're making fun of for being isolated, is stopping white from getting a passed pawn in the ending, which is how the game was lost. Okay. Okay, so he played bishop f1. Always play bishop f1. Knight e5. Put it in h. Bishop f3. And the engine doesn't like bishop f3 and says that's a mistake. And he lets Magnus back in the game and Magnus made double question mark move here. Magnus only has one good move here and he didn't find it. Okay, I don't blame him for not finding it. N nobody would find it. So if Magnus played it, he would be accused of cheating by none other than Hans Niemann. He would say well, Magnus is cheating. That move is queen b1. Defending the back row and more importantly, attacking h7. And now, and now actually white is okay. But he played queen d4 because you centralize your pieces. Unfortunately, that move makes it easy for black to centralize his pieces. Notice the obvious threat, bishop d6. So he played rook to d8, attacking the queen and stopping the threat. And then he played bishop to d5. And now black totally dominates the center. Although 
white dominates the side and the back row, which isn't as good. And you don't want to lose this pawn because then I have two connected pass pawns plus my extra exchange. So he did take. And now in this position, the engine plays bishop takes a2, which is what I would play. And he did not play that. He played bishop to c4, which is not the best move. Winning at chess is hard. He wants to get rid of that white squared bishop. Bishop b2. He traded the bishops. <coughs> Queen c4 check. King g1. And knight c6 is good. Now, white has two pawns for the exchange, but this pawn is hanging. My queen dominates. My rook's going to the back rank. And black's king is pretty safe. And his pawn is defended. At least he has a passed pawn for the time being. Knight f3. Queen takes a2. Bishop f6 attacking the rook. Rook d1 check. And now we have to be careful because white's starting to get an attack against black's king. So he played a5, which not only queens the pawn, but his king has a7 for safety. Knight d4. Queen d5. And in this position, after queen c2 attacking the rook, Black played brilliantly. He played queen check, attacking the king and the bishop. You can't move the king because there's no legal moves. So he played f4. And now if you take the bishop, you lose your rook. And he played very nice. Rook takes d4, going into a winning queen and pawn endgame. And then you have to take with the bishop because your bishop's hanging. And then you have to take the knight. And then you lose this with check. And then this and... I have two passed pawns and you have one passed pawn and I'm controlling my queening square and your queening square because my queen's better than yours. I'm centralized and your king can be checked forever and my king just hides in my two pawns because I don't have my pawns on the third rank. These pawns actually shield the king pretty well. And you would think if Magnus was black, he would win with perfect technique as per usual. And if he was white, he's playing a younger player and the guy would mess up and Magnus would draw with perpetual or something. Some days. Put it in H, A4, Queen A2. Karen? Um, yeah, I thought... Um, let me see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought there was a fork in the pawns, but I don't know where it was. I'm not sure it was In this guess. position? Queen F5 forks the pawn. Yeah. Yeah. So always play queen f5. Then I play a4. Okay. And if you take my pawn, I have queen b2 check and then a3 and you're you can't you, you got to perpetual me cuz I'm queening. Okay. Yeah, and the engine says there's no perpetual. It's giving black like a really big advantage. Yeah, this pawn's pretty strong. So the number of pawns isn't important. It's how much they're queening. So Magnus decided to queen. Queen a2, attacking this pawn. Again, not super important. f5 is an excellent move, stopping the pawn from moving. h5, queen h8 is the best move. Now in this position, Magnus played a bad move. He should probably play queen f7, defending his pawn, attacking this pawn. Um, still he's in trouble. He played queen takes a4. And in this position... Surprisingly, queen h4 is the best move, which is a hard move to find because if you trade queens, white's queening with check on the h8. Mm -hmm. And he played the king g1, which is more obvious. And this position, I, I, I guess, is a table based position, but I'm assuming black's winning, but I'm not sure. Practically, black's winning. Queen goes into the center. And Emil Sutovsky uh, on, on Twitter was very, um, what's the word when you don't like a move? It was very what? Critical. Okay. Very critical of White's next move. He said, he said unbelievably bad. Now, what's funny about that is it's the engine move. So it's easy to sit in your chair at home and say it's no good. Mm -hmm. He said, with the pawns on the board, White has a chance maybe white can queen his pawn. So this, this helps white because white has 
You know, if the queen's going over here helping the pawn queen, maybe I can take this and get counterplay. So he really hated the move g4, trading the pawns. So now white just loses because white, the pawn's going to queen and you can never, you can never do anything. Now the engine actually likes g4. Okay, so king b6, b4, and this is table base and black's winning. Yeah, black's just pushing his pawn and hiding his king up there. And surprisingly to me, I'm surprised. You may not be surprised. Probably you'll be more surprised than me. That'd be my guess. Is Magnus resigned here? I mean, when I have 4,000 checks, I'm not resigning. Now, unfortunately, the two moves that are check here and here, mm -hmm. this move loses immediately to queen here check. I block your check with a check. And after queen here check, and I move my king, you can't check me because I block with a check. So the truth hurts. I guess that's why he resigned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess there's just nothing to do here. Yeah. The engine resigns also. The engine's like, mate. Ridiculous. So that was an odd game because Magnus lost the way that he usually wins. Well, he, he should be black this game. Magnus should have black, unusual opening, eventually wins material and has his king open, gets his king safe, keeps the material, and wins a long end game. This is how Magnus would win if he was black, but he was on the losing side of that. Now, I have an opinion, which Karen won't agree with, which is Magnus has a serious case of old. Very serious. You know who doesn't have a serious case of old? His opponent. 19. And it's important to have a lot of energy when you're playing and to have a lot of, um, what's the word? Uh, English isn't my first, English is my only language. Um, I just think he's burned out. What's the word when you, 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 you crave more and more and more? You have uh, somebody. There are a lot of different words. No, not chutzpah, not gumption. No. Defilement, avarice, drive. Yeah, drive is good, ambition. Yeah, right. Now, now back in the day, okay, in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, if you were 100, 150 points lower than your opponent, as is the case here, and you have the black pieces, as is the case here, and your opponent's been the highest rated player in the world for 11 years and the world champion for 10 years or more, then you're pretty satisfied with the draw. Pretty, pretty satisfied. And that's not the way it goes anymore. That's, that, that, that don't play, homie don't play that. Okay, so Pragna Nanha is winning with black against Ding. Abdu Satarov is winning with black against Carlson. They don't play for a draw with black. Okay, they don't say like, oh no, my opponent's high rated. Ooh, I'm scared. Instead, they study chess 24 hours a day and have 10 chess coaches and they see all tactics and all openings. So they beat people that are quote unquote old like Ding and Carlson. Those guys are seriously old. They're not 17, they're not 19, they're not 21. And they spent their whole life studying chess. And now you gotta tell Magnus, hey Magnus, when you were between 15 and 25 years old, all the openings you studied, all the study you did, forget about that, now study more, study different stuff. Who wants to do that? The answer is Kasparov retired. Everybody retires. They don't want to do it again. Thanks for the $3. Yay, party party. See, now Karen started older, so she's studying. But imagine if Karen oh, was like me, okay, and she was like, I studied openings in my teens, my 20s, and my 30s, and I'm like, sorry, Karen, now, now you're in your 50s, you got to study other openings and do more work. And she's like, I did all that work, why do I have to do more work? And so... For Abu Sitarov, everything's just normal. But for Magnus, he can't rest on his laurels of all the opening analysis he did 10, 15, 20 years ago. He's got to work harder. And some people don't want to work harder when they've been the world champion for 10 years. Mm -hmm. They want to say like, hey, let's play blitz chess. He's tired of it. Thank you, Ray. And it's just, you might think, why doesn't he just do it? Because he's already done it. I hope so, Bonarici. I need to get better at chess.
But these young players, you know, knowing all openings and seeing all tactics and not being afraid of their opponent, one of the advantages Fisher and Kasparov had over their opponents, and this is a West Berger, is they, their opponents were afraid of them. Okay? Like... <laughs> If Karen was playing Carlson, Karen would say, wow, Carlson's good. I'm scared. Okay. And then if Carlson offered her a draw, she would take it. Okay. And these guys, these new guys, these guys in their teens and early 20s, they, they, they want to win against the world champion. Truth hurts. I wouldn't want to win. Just because I can't win doesn't mean I don't want to win. Trying to learn says, that's why I waited until I got older. To start playing chess. That's that right. way I can study and learn it once and then die. Yeah, imagine <laughs> if you were Kasparov, imagine, and you're like, hey, Kasparov, all that stuff that you learned in your teens, 20s, and 30s, that don't matter anymore. Now, now you got to study 12 hours a day and learn new stuff. Kasparov's like, I don't think so. I think I retire. And then I'll just go on Twitter and say crazy stuff. By the way... When you're older, like me and Kasparov, you can say crazier stuff on Twitter because you have the experience. So even if you weren't crazy in your 20s and 30s, you can become crazy easier because you've seen all the crazy and you can emulate it. I you agree. have more experience. I agree with quite a lot of what he says. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to beg to differ. It's not all crazy.